Hello friends. So today we shall discuss on adrenal gland. So in adrenal gland, we shall be starting with the basic sciences that is the embryology, anatomy. Then we will discuss the physiological aspects. Then we will move on to each of the clinical syndromes or the clinical aspects of the adrenal gland. Fine. So let us start with the basics. That is, first is the embryology. Now, the adrenal gland that has got adrenal cortex and adrenal medulla. So, from where is adrenal cortex coming? That is the embryological origin of adrenal cortex. It is from mesoderm. Yeah, mesoderm. The adrenal cortex develops from mesoderm. The adrenal medulla, it is derived from neural crest. So, the adrenal cortex developed from mesoderm and the adrenal medulla is a neural crest derivative. Fine. Neural crest or neuroectoda. Neural crest or neuroectoda. This was first question, first MCQ from this area. Second question, at what period of gestation does the adrenal gland start to produce steroids? So, in the embryonic life, the adrenal cortex starts to produce steroids, mainly cortisol and the sex steroid precursor that is known as DHEA. DHEA stands for dehydroepiandrosterone. These two are produced from the adrenal gland at around 7th to 9th week of gestation. 7th to 9th week. So, it is that it is at this period that the adrenal gland start to produce cortisol and the sex steroid precursor DHEA. Okay. So, these two points you remember from the embryology. So, Next, we will discuss the anatomy. So, in the anatomy, we will just discuss the blood supply of the adrenal gland. Blood supply includes both arterial supply as well as venous drainage. So, this is important because the adrenal gland or the suprarenal gland is supplied by three suprarenal arteries and each suprarenal artery is a branch of different artery. That is the importance of this uh, arterial supply. Adrenal gland is supplied by superior suprarenal artery, middle suprarenal artery and inferior suprarenal artery. So, three suprarenal arteries. Fine. Superior suprarenal artery is a branch of inferior phrenic artery. Inferior phrenic artery. Middle suprarenal artery is a branch of abdominal aorta. That means, it is a direct branch arising from the abdominal aorta. The inferior suprarenal artery is a branch of renal artery. Okay. This is why this top quiz question is important. Each one can be asked as an MCQ. So, I will show you a diagram. Okay. See, this is the blood supply of the adrenal gland showing the suprarenal arteries. This one. This is the This is the superior suprarenal artery, the small ones. This is superior suprarenal artery. This is arising from the inferior phrenic artery. This is the inferior phrenic artery. So, inferior phrenic artery gives rise to superior suprarenal artery. The middle suprarenal artery. This is the middle suprarenal artery. It is arising directly from the abdominal aorta. Abdominal aorta. This one. The middle, the inferior suprarenal artery, which is arising from the renal artery. Fine. So, that is about the arterial supply. Now, coming to the venous drainage. Venous drainage. The venous drainage is important only because in the right side and the left side, the venous drainage is slightly different. In the right adrenal, the right adrenal gland drains into the inferior vena cava directly whereas left adrenal gland drains into the inferior vena cava but that is via left renal vein. So, the difference this difference makes this a potential question. Okay. So, I, that also I will just show you a diagram. Okay. So, this is the difference. See. This is the left renal vein. This is the left renal vein. 
left renal vein is drain left renal vein is receiving the left suprarenal artery left suprarenal vein which is draining into the inferior vena cava whereas the right suprarenal is draining directly because it is more near the inferior vena cava is more towards the right side so the right suprarenal can directly drain into the right i mean the inferior vena cava so this is the question okay so after discussing the embryology and the blood supply of the adrenal gland we will discuss the layers of the adrenal cortex layers of the adrenal cortex this we have studied in physiology what are the layers of adrenal cortex and from the first year you will be knowing this mnemonic of g f uh, r g f r stands for sona glomerulosa sona fasciculata and sona reticularis so this are the three layers of the adrenal cortex so if you take the cross section of the adrenal gland the inside we have the medulla okay the outermost layer of the adrenal cortex is the sona glomerulosa outermost layer the middle layer the middle layer of the adrenal cortex is the sona fasciculata and the innermost layer the innermost layer is the sona reticularis this is very easy to understand in this you all know now the sona glomerulosa secretes mineral corticoids sona fasciculata secretes glucocorticoids and sona reticularis secretes adrenal sex steroids very basics now i wanted to know i want you to know one important concept here the adrenal gland is under the control of pituitary the anterior pituitary secretes ACTH which controls this adrenal cortex to produce hormones fine so the ACTH controls secretion of menocorticoids glucocorticoids and sex steroids right now i am only partly correct because the synthesis or the production of menocorticoid is not under the control of ACTH very very important this is one area which you always go wrong you will think that ACTH is controlling the, all the hormonal production from the adrenal gland it is not correct the mineralocorticoid synthesis from the sona glomerulosa is under the control of a renin angiotensin aldosterone system or the ras so mineralocorticoid synthesis is under the control of ras it has nothing to do with ACTH this you, the importance of this statement you will understand when we discuss adrenal insufficiency okay so there we will be highlighting this once again fine now i'll just show you one diagram from ganon okay so this diagram is showing the layers of the adrenal cortex only one point i want to highlight here you can see this is the outermost layer is the sona glomerulosa so this is a diagram from ganon showing the layers of the adrenal cortex so the outermost layer is a sona glomerulosa this is sona fasciculata this is sona reticularis this much okay and the blue one is the adrenal medulla fine this one point to be taken from here the thickest layer of the adrenal cortex very evident from the diagram the thickest layer of the adrenal cortex is sona fasciculata if you go with the percentage this constitutes glomerulus is around 15 percentage this is 50 percentage this is around 7 percentage percentages i do not want you to learn but this is important the thickest layer is the sauna fasciculator now having studied the embryology blood supply as well as the layers of the adrenal cortex what is the what is known as circadian rhythm what is the circadian rhythm for hormones remember that whenever we study regarding certain hormones we will come across this term but it's on a circadian rhythm this is very important with regard to cortisol and acth so for cortisol circadian rhythm basically means that at certain times of the day the cortisol production or the particular hormone production will be at its peak and certain times it will be at the nadir so that concept is what is known as a circadian rhythm and for cortisol the peak cortisol concentration in the blood is at around 8 to 8:30 am approximately at around 8:30 am the peak of serum cortisol will be seen 
which is known as the acrophase. Acrophase. Okay. So, I will show you one diagram from Harrison. So, this is it. See, this is what is showing the circadian rhythm of the cortisol secretion. You see, this acrophase is around 8.30 a.m. The peak cortisol concentration. So, this term as well as the time is important. So, this is what I want to discuss in the basics of the adrenal gland, the embryology, blood supply, the basic layers of the adrenal cortex as well as the regarding circadian rhythm. This will be discussing along with Cushing syndrome once again the circadian rhythm. So, before going to each disorders per se, I will just give an overview of what we are going to discuss in disorders of the adrenal gland. Okay. So, we will be discussing two sets of disorders. In any endocrine gland, we will be get, discussing these two sets. One is hormonal excess disorders. Second set is hormonal deficiency disorders. So, all the disorders come under any of these, right, when are any of these subgroups, fine. So, hormone excess or hormone deficiency, okay. So, one general principle you can understand from this etiologies of hormonal excess. So, all the endocrine gland glands are under the control of the hypothalamic pituitary system you all know okay so the hormonal excess if you want to learn the etiologies you can remember like this the etiologies will be either a tumor of that particular gland a tumor of that gland or it will be some pathologies or tumor of the hypothalamic pituitary region mainly the pituitary tumors. This is, this is an, just a rough idea I am giving you. Okay. So, tumor of the gland means, for example, if you are taking the adrenal gland, you are studying Cushing syndrome. So, in Cushing syndrome, it is a state of cortisol excess. Fine. The etiologies, you can remember like this. The etiology will be either a tumor of that gland, that is tumor of the adrenal gland, or it will be a tumor of the hypothalamic pituitary system. That means it is mostly a tumor of the pituitary. And the characteristic features of these tumors, they are mostly benign tumors. They are mostly benign tumors. And the, uh, malignant tumors are very rare. So they are benign tumors. Benign tumors or adenomas. So it will be either benign tumors or adenoma, or they can also be hyperplasia of the gland. Okay. So, in these two etiologies will be the common etiologies of the hormonal excess disorder when it comes to, comes to that pathologies affecting that particular gland. If you are talking about the hypothalamic pituitary region, it, it will be mostly tumor of the pituitary, that is pituitary adenomas. You will understand this better when we discuss each of these conditions. Mostly, I am discussing with regard to adrenal gland. Fine. When you discuss the hormonal deficiency disorders, the etiologies you can remember by five eyes. First eye is immune mediated. Second eye is infections. Third eye is infiltrations. Fourth eye is infarction. And fifth eye is Iatrogenic. This is just a rough idea I am giving. Everywhere it may not be exactly fitting. You will have to adjust here and there. Fine. That is it. So, this is all about the basics. We will be, dis we will be discussing in detail regarding Cushing syndrome, Cone syndrome, adrenal insufficiency as well as the congenital adrenal hyperplasia under Disorders of adrenal cortex and disorders of adrenal medulla will be discussing pheochromocytoma. Bye. Okay. <laughs>